Osios, this is the brothers and brothers and sisters. We come now this time and in this way in the Advent season. So as you can see, we have changed our candles here to the purple ones in, in honoring uh, of this time. And uh, Advent is the time in which we are thinking about the birth of Christ, uh, the life that Jesus lived and uh, setting a good example for us to follow. And there are many, many aspects to this time and to his life that most people don't even stop and think about. And so today, we're going to look at some of this uh, for uh, some very practical purposes. <clears throat> now, we're going to go to our Hebrew Bibles now. So if you want to turn your, your Bibles to uh, Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, you know, Samuel, Isaiah, I uh, like them. So uh, it's, it's good that we're, we're there today. So we're looking at Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn that her penalty is paid, that she has received from God's hand double for all her wrongdoings. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of God. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made level. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of God shall be revealed and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of God has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of God blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, God comes with might, and God's arm rules for God. God's reward is with him, and, his, and God's recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. In our second reading today is from 2 Peter Chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a, in this particular case. <clears throat> so if you want to take a quick look at that. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with God one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. God is not slow about God's promise as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of God will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. 
since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with God's promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at hand. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by God at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of God as salvation. What if people, human beings, what if you were in harmony with God's patience and taking right action? Now this is the second Sunday of Advent, time in which we reflect upon <clears throat> all that Jesus had to endure in order for God's plan to come into fulfillment, to establish the opportunity for human beings to enter into that state of grace that God offers, to receive that forgiveness for our wrongdoings, And, you know, a lot of times people get caught up in the idea that uh, about this, uh, and especially here in Second Peter, we look back and we see the story of, of how the world's going to come to an end. And people talk, think about that. They talk about the end times and about what's coming after. But... Uh, Actually, we look at Peter, and Peter's attention, at least, uh, according to uh, the reading that we have here today, you know, uh, Peter's attention seems to be more about focusing us on God's patience and about God's forgiveness. Because it says here in our reading today, you know, God doesn't want to give up on anybody. God wants everybody to be welcome at the table, at God's table. So instead of thinking about it in terms of, uh, you know, we're, we're the good guys and everybody else is the bad guys and we're going to heaven and they're going to hell, or the lake of fire, whatever you want to interpret it. Here in Second Peter, we're looking at during this time of Advent about how God is being patient with all humanity. And God is hoping that each of us, all of us, will come to a place of doing right action, taking right action in our lives each and every day for the purpose of being able to enter into God's home together, all of us, one at a time. So what does it mean for us to think about God's patience and being in harmony with God's patience because, you know, a thousand years, Jim and Crickets, <laughs> from our, we're not going to be here. Uh, we'll be lucky if we make a hundred, right? So we have a certain amount of time, a very finite amount of time, to sort out in our own lives what it is that Peter is, uh, is saying here and what God really wants us to do. And William Brosen, he writes in here in the lectionary about this pretty, pretty clearly and distinctly. And, uh, and he really is all about promoting uh, God's patience and God's grace. And, you know, 
Grace is significant, especially at this time when we think about Jesus and all that he went through from his childhood on up to suffering and dying on the cross and resurrecting, is that it's all about sharing God's grace with us, letting us know that we, each and every one of us, uh, do have the opportunity to grow and evolve as spiritual beings and as human beings in a good and healthy way if we are willing to make that choice. And, you know, unfortunately, many people think about, you know, their salvation in that context, and they think, well, I'm saved. I don't have to worry about anybody else. God's already preordained who's going to be saved and who's not. So I can just do my thing and everything's all right. But is that really consistent with what Peter is talking about? Is that really consistent with what Christ is talking about? What Christ lived? And to, feel, to figure that out, we need to really go into uh, a different context here. Now, Daniel Darling, back in 2008, wrote a sermon unsung hero of Christmas. And in that sermon, he talked about Joseph. You know, when, when we look at the prophecy of Isaiah, you know, that's relating into, we can look at Mark, and we hear this whole thing about, in Mark chapter 3, or chapter 1, in the very first verses there, we hear about uh, the prophecy of uh, John the baptizer and how he's going to come in and he's going to pave the way and that John the baptizer is, is going to get things in a good place for Jesus to come into the world and to take over but here Daniel Darling is saying that Joseph is actually the real hero of this story because Joseph made sacrifices that people don't really pay attention to. Now according to what the, the Bible says here about the birth of Jesus, you know, we know that Joseph was well within his rights to set Mary aside and not marry her. And Joseph, uh, he would have stood out. Everybody would have praised him for that because it was according to the law. He would have fit right in with his people. It had been, all right, man, good for you. But he didn't. He made the choice to take right action. And right action meant taking an unborn child that wasn't his and giving it a family. and not holding it against the child. His right action was to take Mary as his wife, knowing that she was pregnant by somebody else. Because he didn't really believe he, she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's pretty evident in all the readings. But he didn't blame her or the child. He held no judgment. And that makes him a hero. And there are many, many unsung heroes in this world who often go, and mostly do, go unrecognized, but they are doing the next right thing. They are taking right action. They are living God's patience in this world because they have a willingness to give of themselves, to help others out, and not expect anything in return. And we all, we, we talk about soldiers, and, and I was a soldier, and they deserve to be recognized as heroes. But we also talk about firemen, policemen, other very low paid, people who, who live very dangerous jobs to keep a lot of people safe, and I'm not saying they're all perfect, they're all motivated by altruism, but I am saying that there are many unsung heroes 
besides them and in addition to them who have God's patience. They are living that patient knowledge and that understanding they are enduring knowing that one day this world and everything in it, this entire universe will fade away. But God will remember. God will welcome them to the table. No exceptions. Because they're willing to embrace God's spirit. To allow themselves to set aside feelings, personal feelings, personal judgments, and do the next right thing. To take that right action. One day at a time, just as Jesus has done in his life regardless of the consequences and the challenges. And that's what we look at here today when we are thinking about this. There are many challenges in this world besides tyranny and oppression on the other side of the planet that we have to deal with. And I spoke earlier today to the people who were here. You know, Keystone Pipeline has been a big deal here for a while now. A lot of people have been talking about it for some time. There's been all kinds of environmental studies and things like that that the president has implemented that has delayed construction of the Keystone Pipeline. But here not too long ago, the Republican-dominated United States Congress, or uh, Senate, not Senate, but House of Representatives, sorry, let's go to the House of Representatives first, passed a bill to authorize the construction of the Keystone Pipeline you know, through North America so that oil could be shipped around the world, not to Americans. Now, it didn't pass in the Senate, but immediately thereafter, Republican religious leaders, not religious, Republican political leaders, specifically, I believe, Senator Thole of South Dakota, announced that when Republicans take control of the entire Congress, Senate and the House of Representatives in 2015, that they were going to send a message by passing that legislation. Now, many people might not think much about that, but here's the rest of the story that you haven't heard about in social media. President Cyril Scott of the Rosebud Reservation announced that if Congress passed the Keystone Pipeline, that it would be an act of war. And the reason it would be is because what the pipeline is slated to go through tribal lands and nobody, and I mean nobody, has asked American Indian leaders of the nations affected for permission to run that pipeline through the land. So here we are in the second decade of the 21st century reliving the waterline incident through the Navajo Nation that still doesn't allow the Navajos access to the water. Reliving the illegal uranium drilling in South Dakota that wiped out untold numbers of people and also a small percentage, a very small percentage of extremely wealthy people can get more wealthy. And racist congressmen, racist senators are violating treaty, violating the rights of people here in North America to fatten their pockets. Is that why Christ died on the cross? Is that taking right action? Are you supporting that kind of effort? Do you act out like that in your life, even in smaller ways? We must remember 
that if we truly believe that our Creator is good and caring and wants us to follow in our Creator's footsteps, to walk that trail that Jesus has walked, then we must be choose to be in harmony with God's patience for the world and strive to do as God commands. And that is to continue to do the next right thing, to take right action each and every day to help improve the quality of life of all the people and to inspire others to set that good example that will bring people to want to develop that relationship with God as we have. Anything less is a betrayal to what Christ has done for us. You think about this. You sit with these things. And reflect on these things during this time of Advent. This time where we honor the life of Jesus. Walk in beauty. Whatever.